Hi, Pre-K. It's Miss Lauren, and I'm back with a few more stories. This one's called Guido's Gondola, and this book is written by Renee Riva and illustrated by Steve Yorkman. Near an old pier in Venice, where small children play, Guido's Gondola ferried tourists each day. So this little boat that he's on is called a gondola. And the streets in Venice, Italy, actually look like this. They're water. Waterways. The young rat enjoyed the tourism trade, rowing at noon with a breeze in the shade. Along lover's lane, the gondola swayed, carrying sweethearts as soft music played. With rides so romantic, charming and quaint, tourists loved Guido and thought him a saint. Gracious and helpful, yet light as a feather, kids feared he might blow away in bad weather. But Guido's big heart made up for his size. He was tremendous in everyone's eyes. One day he stopped to pick up a client who climbed aboard with trunks that were giant. A motor, the man said, that's what you need to make your job easy and give your boat speed. Your life will be better, business will grow, think of the time that it takes you to row. That night, Guido drifted beneath a bright moon to sweet serenades from a faraway tune. In the morning, he arose with one thought in mind. A motor, he wondered? Perhaps it is time. He picked out a motor of fireball red, then changed his mind for a blue one instead. The man had been right in the rightest way. The new speedboat business increased each day. So many people, so much stuff to tote. Guido worked fast with his super speedboat. One day, a rather large woman climbed in with two chubby children and one who was thin. She worried the speedboat might not stay afloat. What you need, my dear, is a much bigger boat. That night, neath a wondrous star-studded sky, Guido's gondola puttered on by. But the next morning, with ink on his tail, he painted the sign that said, Boat for Sale. It didn't take long for the speedboat to sell. It had, after all, been cared for quite well. Guido's new yacht was stunning and stellar with big jet engines and a turbo propeller. Guido gave tours and found it quite funny that folks were so happy to pay him big money. It's a much bigger boat. He can take lots, a lot more mice. Just when he thought he had almost enough, a man came aboard with way too much stuff. I have an offer to be quite specific. I'll pay you to ship it to the Pacific. Guido set sail on a much larger ship while his poor little yacht went to her slip. And a boat slip is kind of like a parking spot for a boat. The first day at sea, his spirits just soared. The second day out, he felt a bit bored. He laid on the deck, still stunning his tail, sunning his tail, till the wind turned to a blustery gale. The winds and the rains continued for weeks. He was chilled to the bone with a little chapped cheeks. Brrr. One long dark night, as he nibbled on toast, he suddenly realized what mattered most. It wasn't the boat or the stuff he had. The small things in life were what made him glad. He missed the music, the soft serenade, singing to sweethearts adrift in the shade. He yelled from the deck, enough is enough. It's not all about big stuff, big boats and stuff. True to his word, he completed his trip, then sailed back home on his big empty ship. That evening, neath glorious warm summer sky, a little gondola zipped quickly by. Dear Guido's sad heart filled up with great joy. 
Excuse me, young lad, lad, he called to the boy. I'll swap you my ship if you'll come ashore. Keep the blue motor, just me leave me the oar. To this day in Venice, where children still play, a very wise rat ferries tourists each day. Each evening at twilight, neath a bright moon, his gondola sways to a faraway tune. The end.